Today we have deals. The FTC just went after PC hardware makers, Nvidia is opening up, and their next-gen cards are getting a huge boost from this alone. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. First up for today, new PC hardware sales are coming with Amazon's Prime Day right around the corner to Newegg's Independence Day sale that's currently going on right now. And speaking of that, I thought I'd go over a few deals, and I will of course have affiliate links to these down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Starting things off, we have AMD's still pretty new desktop Ryzen 8000G APUs. Remember that these bad boys come with integrated GPUs based on AMD's newest RDNA 3 architecture, meaning no more Vega. And because of that, it can actually game, so you're getting a very nice all-in-one chip. And as you can see, they're on sale right now with the 8700G down $30, the 8600G down $47, and the 8500G is down $20. Next, we have a few good deals on storage like Seagate's 22TB NAS hard drive or some of Samsung's SSDs. Ultimately, the storage deals aren't all that great this time around, which has me a bit worried, but there are still some good deals here. So make sure to check that out in the description below. Next up for today, if you've ever opened up a piece of tech in the last, say, 20 years, you've likely seen a sticker like this, making you debate whatever it is you're doing is worth losing your warranty over. Well, the US Federal Trade Commission has just sent a warning to ASRock, Gigabyte, and Zotac that the warranty void if removed stickers are in fact illegal under the Warranty Act. According to the letter, each company has 30 days to comply before they review their warranties again. The FTC actually did something similar back in 2018 against much bigger companies, but clearly they're looking at smaller companies now as well. Of course, these stickers are there in the hopes of deterring customers from opening up their device and then breaking it, but they'll now have to actually show that what you did broke it rather than voiding your warranty altogether just from removing a screw. And next up, NVIDIA is beginning to open source more and more of their products, and it's amazing to see. This time, it has to do with their impressive RTX Remix tool that lets modders add modern technologies like ray tracing to much older games. Last year, the company announced that they had open sourced their RTX Remix runtime, but now they've open sourced their Remix toolkit as well. According to NVIDIA, it will allow modders to quote, streamline how assets are replaced and scenes are relit, increase supported file formats for RTX Remix Remix's Asset Ingester and bolster RTX Remix's AI texture tools with new models. But that's actually not all, as the company also announced that they're releasing the SDK for RTX Remix runtime, which will let modders deploy it into not only other applications, but even games that don't use DirectX 8 or 9, which was a requirement up until now. Basically, this opens it up to pretty much any game out there, given they're willing to put in the work and have access to the rendering pipeline of the game. Plus, according to Tom's Hardware, the the open source portion actually could make it easier for these games to run on AMD hardware, making this a huge announcement. Not only that, but they're adding support for their Remix toolkit with REST API, so you can do things like Live Link Remix to Blender, other modding tools, or in one example they give, the AI app Comfy UI. Here you can see they were able to add textures by just using text prompts. Basically, this is a huge update for Nvidia's RTX Remix, and it should make it easier than ever to upgrade older games. Though I will say that one of my fears is that it makes all games essentially look the same. I definitely like the idea of using AI to speed up certain processes, but making massive changes with a simple text prompt could become so enticing that publishers forego paying artists to give it unique styles. But that's just a quick thought from me. Let me know what you think this will become down in the comments below. And lastly for today, NVIDIA's RTX 50 cards are set to get a huge performance jump from their memory alone. If you remember a little while back, I went over Micron's announcement that they were sampling GDDR7 for gaming and AI. In that announcement, the company actually gave some wild stats for next-gen GPUs powered by their new memory when compared to previous generations, with them actually claiming a 30% increase in FPS and ray tracing and even rasterization workloads. At the time, I mentioned that I wasn't sure if this was an overall 
overall performance boost or just from the memory itself? Well, in a somewhat resurgence of that claim, we're getting a bit more information. For starters, the wording of it really does make it sound like they mean performance from just memory and nothing else. But then PC Gamer recently tested this out with a 4080 Super, and while they weren't able to get that over 30% boost in speed that GDDR7 gets over GDDR6X, they were able to overclock its memory by 18%, and then compare it to a standard 4080 Super, which should still give us an idea of the performance boost we might expect. Unfortunately, they only got a 5-7% to performance improvement in a couple 3D Mark tests, but when they looked at Cyberpunk 2077 and Returnal, the minimum frame rate saw a 12% increase in Cyberpunk and 11% in Returnal. So not bad, though obviously not the 18% that we were thinking. Though of course, the 4080 Super may just be too slow to really be bottlenecked by memory all that much. But then, a recent story saw a team that looked at the 4090 and got a 13% increase in performance from a 23% increase in memory clock. So it's definitely getting there in terms of performance. Ultimately, while Micron does show a similar 30% boost in their graphs compared to GDDR6X, I wonder if they were comparing it to 20 gigabit per second GDDR6 like their AI numbers. That's what Tom's Hardware seems to suggest with their article. See, the 32 gigabit per second GDDR7 is 60% faster than GDDR6, so when compared to last gen's 30%, we can likely expect around a 15% performance boost from last gen. And sure, 15% may not sound all that great, but remember that we're talking about from memory alone, so that's before core increases, clock increases, or anything like that, though obviously the price increase is the real thing to worry about. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 50 cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out those deals down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!